the best song that has surfaced SoundCloud is Fetty. Fetty. Like, it's not even a question. Man, we was at um, South by with Playboy Cardi. You know, at first he was awful music. Yeah. But like, once we started rocking, he was cream click for a little bit. Like right before the whole ASAP transition. I remember it was me, Cardi, and Ian. Yeah. You know the part the shipping, the packing, this vacuum seal? Yeah. That was supposed to be the hook. But then Cardi was like, nah, let me do it. I'm like, nigga, what the hell you know about hooks? That nigga, when he did that shit, I like, I don't know. Yo, what's going on, guys? You're watching Kids Take Over Vancouver all the way to New York. Oh my God, Maxwell Cream. What's going on? How's it going, bro? Have you ever been to Canada before? Who on um, Canada, man? I've been to the border, but they ain't let me over. Nah, they were like, I'm a Crip, so I can't go. That's what they said? Yeah, they're like, if you're a Crip, KKK, Hells Angels, GD, Black Panther, yeah, any organization from America, you can't go. That's wild. I mean, that's why you gotta have the Drake connect, cause Drake got Gucci Mane over Man, you know what I mean? Drake cool, nah, I told yeah. him, like, boy, just wait, boy, I'ma come, but, you know, you got the PJ fly with us. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I mean, bro, I think um, the first thing I want to say is like, I think there's like songs of the year, but then there's like sleeper songs of the year, right? right. Your song with Tyler was the song of the year, if you Thanks. ask me. Like, and the video too, it was, like took me by surprise. Um, I'm just so curious, like, what's your guys' relationship and, and how'd you even meet? That's such a like cool ass link up. Man, shit, we cool. I met Tyler before on 6th Street. I gave him a CD. Yeah. I don't think he remember that shit. Back when I was pushing my shit out like 2014, but I was at Yams Day, like 2019 or some shit like that. I performed, then like, I was backstage with Rocky, you know, Rocky and Tyler Cool. Yeah. And Tyler bumped into me talking about he was in London when he heard my album that he was with Rick Rubin. And then Rick Rubin put him on my shit. Rick Rubin? <clears throat> Hell yeah. Damn. So I like, damn. So I had to ask Hov. I like, Rick Rubin, he hit him and found out he like, yeah. So I'm like, all right, for sure. Mm. Then like, man, Tyler was just working. We've been working. We got hella songs. Yeah. But you know, I'm particular and he particular. So we like, we're going to put out this one. Hell yeah. I mean, you guys are both so funny online, I feel like. So, like, I'm just curious, like, what's, like, the funniest encounter you've had with Tyler the Creator? Um, uh, shit. All of them crazy, but when I bought him to Houston and, like, had him around the homies and shit like that, just some crazy shit. I know my, um, somebody was out there and, like, they made, like, a gay joke and Tyler heard it, but, like, when Tyler heard it, he was so disgusted. He was like, whoa, whoever said that is scared at me, man. You don't play like that. I don't know. I think them niggas like they crazy. Like, they do their thing, but yeah. Tyler, my boy, like you know what I'm saying. He he normal. He put me on a lot of game. Okay. You know what I'm saying. And like he just he himself. I don't like people that be trying to be like somebody that come around and try to be gangster because yeah. At Max are around, bro. Be yourself. Yeah. You know. What if I did that? That would be weird, right? Hey, yeah, we'll snatch you up and hang you over the roof, like yeah. yo. Okay, I won't do that. Let's I'm not playing, do I'm that. Playing. Uh, nah, but that's funny. I know on the song 1159 you said that you never pay for features, right? And I right. thought that was really cool because on your albums, dude, you have like ASAP Rocky, Tyler Creator, Benny the Butcher, Fre like Freddie Gibbs, so many people. And I'm just like, they must really fuck with you as a person, right? Uh, yeah. What do you think it is about you that like people just gravitate towards you? Shit, I'm, I'm just real, I guess. I'm normal, like, I fuck with people. And plus, like, I don't just go grab a feature because oh, this person here, let me grab a feature. Mm. I have a song in mind. And anybody I probably asked for a feature, when I ran into them, they would like, send me something. Mm. You know, like, so let me tell you about the rap cap. Don't run into me and be like, hell yeah, man, we're going to send you something because I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah. But like, you know, I mean, be like that. Everything been so genuine. Even like the Anderson Pop. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bro, Ben reached out to me like, like, that's one of the dudes that's been rocking since, like, you know, like before. Been reaching out, make sure I'm good. Rocky, we've been rocking. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Freddie Gibbs. Billy the Butcher, everybody, like, you know, it just be genuine. Hell yeah. I mean, Don Tolliver, too, is 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 it boy. true you guys went to high school together? Well, shit, we went to the same high school, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think by the time he got there, I left. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, it was the same school. Yeah, he went there with Brodenham, though. He was still there. Oh, for real? You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I'm older. Plus, I had moved to Fort Bend. I had moved out the hood. Okay, okay. That time. But yeah, hey, Don Tolliver, for me, yeah, yeah he from A-Leaf, Hastings. Hell yeah, bro. I mean, uh, is that something you guys ever talk about with each other? Like, yo, we're both people who went to the same school and like, kind of look at where we are now. Hell yeah. Hell, he tell me this shit all the time. Yeah. That must feel cool as hell, man. That's I mean, crazy because I went to school, like, with Don, and I went out to school with Travis and them, too. Like, oh, on for real? Like, on side, too. Like, you're like, hey, yeah, that's how I know yeah. Travis. Well, you guys actually, I mean, you moved to, like, different schools and you experienced, like, the suburban part of it, but then the other side of it, too, right? Right, right. 
did that kind of influence your music? Because I'm sure you were like friends with white kids listening to like Mac Miller and like- Man, they put me on so like, um, my junior year, they were putting me on shit like 10 deep. Like that's how I became a sneakerhead. Oh, 10 deep the brand, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And then like going to their parties and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they felt like since they knew me, they was from the West. So like they get a feel of 80, like, yeah, man, we know Maxo. Yeah. Shit like, like I said, like, <laughs> Yeah, I know, like, the gangster persona, like, you know what I'm saying, what I used to be, you know what I'm saying? But, I like, you could be a geek, you could be a gangster, whatever. If you a normal person, you real, you genuine, I'm going to fuck with you. Fuck right. you yourself, so. Right. Hell yeah, and I mean, you're from Houston, and I'm, I feel like anyone that listens to your music could right away just tell you're from Houston, you know, because right. you rap it so much. But, like, you know, I'm just curious. I've been to Houston, you know, and I didn't get the full Houston experience. What is, where like, uh, where did I go in Houston? Yeah. Um, I don't know the exact area, but like all I did there was like I drove around. It was cool. I went to Travis Scott's little cafe. I, I spent 12 bucks for a smoothie and um, that's about it. Yeah. But like, what's the actual Houston experience? When you get this, I'm going to grab you. Boom. As soon as you get off the um, plane, right? Yeah. We're we'll hopping in a black car. We're going to smoke some CBD. All right. But we're going to smoke my strain, Texas tea. Then what if I don't smoke? What if you don't smoke? Well, shit, just act like you high, dude. Right. Yeah. The hell? Then look, then look, we're going to go to Turkey Leg Hood. Okay. I'm gonna get you the, the stuffed turkey leg Hennessy glaze. Don't ask no questions. Then I'm gonna get you the Hennessy. What's the frozen Hennessy? I'm gonna get you that. Do the, yeah, all right, we're gonna get a frozen done hoodie. Then I'll take you to Seaside. Okay. So I'm going to call Molo, get you a section bottle girls all inside your face. You know what I'm saying? At the Seaside, we're gonna go to Prospect Chill. At the Prospect Chill, we're going to James Harden Bar. Oh, he has and a bar then, in Houston? Yeah, okay. then, his, then his bar turned to a club. Okay. Then Grand Finale. The Booty Club, Area 29. That's that I've heard about Houston. I've definitely have heard that. It's an all day event. It's something cracking all day, jumping like. Mm. So you have like a whole itinerary pretty much. Like hey, I know anything to do. Is that what happens when like your artist friends come to the city? Like you take them through that schedule pretty much? Yeah. They That's already know. They coming for that schedule. The hell yeah. That's what's up, get camp. They probably got some at camp if they coming, but yeah. Houston like the new LA, bro. Yeah. Everybody moving out though. Yo, you mentioned James Harden. I know he like got traded is, is uh, how do people feel about him in Houston now? Like, like he did so much for them, obviously. Man, James Harden, I ain't gonna lie. He is H Town. I don't care what I know he's from LA or whatever. Yeah. But Harden, yeah. Harden turned the city up for real, for real. Yeah. What do you think about um, you know, we're talking about Houston. What do you think about like the younger scene, like, you know, Heaven and like Baby Cody? But shit show, they going crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Baby Cody, I've been knowing about man, baby Cody got songs. Oh, for real? Hell yeah, yeah, from like 2018, 2017, shit like that. But yeah, you got them. You got KCG Josh, you got D Slim, you know what I'm saying, Cream. You got Guapo. I mean, it's so many artists. I don't want to say nobody, like, you know what I'm saying, Miss, but yeah. Houston got like a real scene that everybody need to tap into. There's a lot going on. Right. You got um, TSF One Punch. You know, you got a lot of people. If you guys are watching, go like search some of these guys up, you know? Search them up. Some of them I don't even know, but I'm going to go search them up. But, bro, uh, I say this to everybody every time the best song that has surfaced SoundCloud is Fetty. Fetty. It's not even a question. What's the best song? Like, it has aged so well. And like, I even see you performing it and the crowd loves it every single time. How did you guys make that song? I'm just curious. Man, we was at um, South by with Playboy Cardi. You know, at first he was awful music. Yeah. But like, once we started rocking, he was cream click for a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like right before the whole ASAP transition. I remember it was me, Cardi, and Ian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We was rocking. Bro, them back there too. They was all there. We was all in the studio. Went to the studio, I was on Xanax like a motherfucker. And it's the first <laughs> song I didn't write. Yeah. Like we did Fetty. Like, all right, so look, you know the part the shipping, the packing, this vacuum seal. Yeah. That was supposed to be the hook. But then Cardi was like, nah, let me do it. I'm like, nigga, what the hell you know about hooks? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That nigga, when he did that shit, I like, I don't know. Yeah. Then Dash did his shit. We go on tour, right? Yeah. I'm on tour with um, I think Joy Facts. And the song is popping up on SoundCloud, remind you. I'm not even no SoundCloud nigga. I don't really know. Was good. I'm used to I meme and shit like that. Like music was transitioning. It wasn't no Apple Music for real. So then, like the song come on, people singing the shit. I don't even know the fucking song. Then I linked back up with Cardi, and then that's when he was doing Broke Boy and shit. And that's when all that shit started unraveling. It started making sense. Right. I realized what we was doing for like that whole little generation. Me, him, Uzi, Thousand Man, Funny, fucking Uno, all that shit. Yeah, for real. Do you guys? Do you still keep in contact with any of those guys to this day? Shit. I, to be honest, I talk to Uzi and Cardi still. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. Shit show. 
I would just love, you know, I know it's been some years, but if you guys did some shit now, and I, cause I know he does like all that vampire, like new shit, right? If you were on that, bro. I'm trying to, hey, listen, yeah, I told him like, like when he was doing that, I'm like, that's Cardi being like, I gotta like this shit. Yeah. I like this shit though. Yeah. Cause he ahead of his wave, like that whole Bam shit. Yeah. It's a whole new generation of rappers doing millions of views off that sound that he started. Yes. But if, if you want to see it, ask Cardi, tell Cardi in the camera right now. Bro, there, please Cardi. Yeah, Maxo on that on that wave, bro. That would be so hard. Like, cause I think your voice kind of complements those beats, if you ask me. So. Um, but yo, I want to ask you this. I think that in your music, right? You talk about a lot of personal things, right? Just, you know, away from just the regular things rappers talk about. And I feel like a rapper, you know, most kids grow up and be like, oh, this is such a glamorous life. But what are some things that like the, the you know, average person doesn't know about being a rapper and like, you know, coming from where you come from? Man, when you're a rapper, bro, people expect too much for you. Like, like when you're a rapper, they expect that you rich. They think you rich, everybody ain't rich. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And then like your friends, your people, you do one thing for one somebody, you gonna hear. I do one thing for him, I gotta hear from him. But like it ain't like that because we all bros and we've been like that since day one. Yeah. But like really, what I realized, my bros understand the mode because they be at the show, they be on the road with me, it be family. You know what I'm saying? Like people start acting weird. Like, not really you change, but people change. Mm. Then your environment change. But as far as rap shit for me, I always been a street nigga. I always had to look over my shoulder, been paranoid, so I'm used to it. But right now, kid, let's say you're not a street dude, you just make music. Now you got this target on you in 2022 because being a rapper is so dangerous. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you might not be a street nigga moving like that. But when you become a rapper, you better move. Like I feel like if you already from the streets, you made for it. Right. Or like, shit, you know how to move. But like being a young kid, you got to get adapted. Like, man, get that security. Don't let these niggas lie to you. Protect your shit, nigga. Somebody draw down on you. Me, I'm a different kind of nigga. I don't know. But man, get your jury up because that shit ain't worth your life. Right. Me, I don't see myself going. But like, you know what I'm saying? Prevention is better than cure. That's how you prevent that shit from not happening. Yeah. Move right. I feel that. I think there's so much that goes into it that like your average person wouldn't see, but you know. Um, but bro, I saw this video. This is like kind of recently where you broke up a fight at your show. Yeah. Baby, you don't want no problem. You know you took me. I be no bully. That that shit. That's the fuck I'm talking about. That was so hard. I mean, I'm so curious. When you were like, you know, just like in high school and you went to shows, did you ever get in a fight in the audience? What? Bro, I used to destroy shit. <laughs> bro, man, him was just talking about how we went to a show. We had fought. We fought like 15 Mexican dudes. Oh, for real? Hell yeah, on some bullshit. Just you two versus 15? Just us two. Oh, God, we were just talking about that. Well, that's what I, I don't lie. Yeah. You know, since we on the interview, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it real with you. That's why I used to fuck shit. I, I was a fighter. I used to fuck up parties. Niggas used to hate to see us come to parties like, oh, they about to fuck it up. <laughs> the shows, who they, I remember I was on tour with Chief Keep in Houston. Yeah. And they ain't let us perform in Houston, said it was exciting game right. Shit like that. So mm. like when I go to shows and people see me breaking up fights, they yeah. see my progression, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you've been listening to me, I used to have songs talking about Trigger Maxo. Motherfucker, I ride through spring and shooting up here. Now I got shit talking about I got homies in the gray. I got brothers in the like I'm growing with the progression. Right. And it's still max, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, man, I'm not gonna let my fans fight. Why the fuck y'all fighting? Y'all came to see me and we all feel. Yeah, that's actually really cool. And then like they made up and I don't know if they those two people still talk to this day, but maybe they're like friends, bro. You never know. Man, they probably friends, dude. They was mosh pit. I ain't man, yeah. if one of my ops in the crowd, we about to fight, I'm not gonna mosh pit with them. Yeah, no, fuck so, that. So if you were going there and march pit with him, it was no issue to begin with. That was hella cool. Yeah, I mean, I also saw a TikTok where, you know, you were playing basketball, I think. And I'm just curious, because, like, your jump shot, you didn't even jump. Right. Why everybody say that shit? Because, bro, it just seems like you must have a lot of upper body strength if you got, you know? Is that your actual jump shot? Yeah. Dude, I got to see I it. I be missing when I jump. I'm like, hold on, let me just get the little tippy toe. <laughs> For real? Hell yeah. That's hard. Do you do you play basketball? Nah, I bust your ass. I feel like you, you'd be able to post up on me because I'm just like, you oh, know, man, why y'all think just post? See, look, that's what people think from fighting. People think, oh, Max, I'm going to sit on me. No, I can fight you from the outside. Hooping, I go hoop. Yeah. I can do all that. I just, just don't. I'm going to have all my energy, but after the game, yeah. you're going to see the most exhausted person ever. <laughs> like, you ever see me walk up these steps? I did see. I did okay, see. Okay, like that. He was fairly exhausted, yeah. I mean. But, like, even watch my shows. You, I jump up and down. I got energy. Yeah. I'm not just sitting there with no mic stand, you feel me? Damn, I mean, I think you mentioned in, a, in an interview before that you're kind of like an animal, like, like you love animals a lot, right? No? Yeah, hold on, what I said about animals? I don't know, I just remember that you like, you like animals. Nah, I know a lot about animals. Yeah. Oh, you know a lot about them. Okay, so you yeah. watch like educational videos on them. Yeah, I spent a lot of time making the Brandon Banks album. Yeah. When I was in, 
LA, like you know what I'm saying? I prescribe Adderall. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I'm on the Adderall doing this, like I come out from the studio and just be sitting there. Yeah. And I watch like three documentaries about lions or like the hyenas. Like I can tell you, like, okay, a lion is a pride. So it's a male running it. You know what I'm saying? Then elephants and hyenas, they're matriarchs. They mean that it's a queen. Okay. Or like a woman, like a powerful woman. And hyenas, they like they're like like the woman so dominant and want to be a man so much that every hyena has a penis. They all do. And they greet each other by smelling it, licking it. And sometimes the female will insert her dominance by pumping the man in his anal part. For real. And you saw this all in the documentary. I ain't watch it, but they watch yeah, I ain't watched the um that part, but they <laughs> okay. said it. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you didn't, bro. See, I didn't mean... be trying to get you. <laughs> hey bro, I'm gonna be honest, you know what would be sick? You need to go on a safari, bro. I mean, Australia, I was gonna go, but they got a mosquito that are fucking bite oh, you or die. That. So I'm like, man, I ain't going out there, but. Nah, fuck that. But I mean, if you're in a safari and the roof's closed and everything, like, I would do it, bro. You get to see I all the. I would do it. Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I wanna do? I wanna go, they all sound crazy. I wanna go diving with sharks. I told him that here, like, you going by yourself. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that, bro. I wanna go. That shit's so tight. Yeah. Are you good at swimming? See, I know how to go like that. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you I gotta got a do. Pool. Yeah. I know how to swim. <laughs> That's all you gotta know, honestly. You know, what would you say to someone who's like, the only animal I can tolerate is a cat, because they don't do shit. But a dog, bro, I'm pretty scared. It's like, like how, how would I get over my fear of the dogs? I'm just curious. Um, I was scared of dogs, but he had pit bulls and I stayed with him and shit. I, had, I, I couldn't be scared. Yeah. Hell yeah, but we were scared of, I'm talking about like, I used to see a dog and run. Yeah, me too. Run, but like shit, when you realize there's a lot of bark, you let them come up to you and smell you, they be, you know what I'm saying? I a lot of my homies breed, breed dogs. They started from pit bulls, and they got Frenchies. Mm. So we just, I don't know. And the trick is you just got to give them something to eat, and then they kind of just shut up and, you know, be your friend. Sure. But, yo, I guess the last thing I wanted to ask you, you know, is like, um, I know you drop your deluxe album, right? For sure. Um, and that's still fresh in people's minds. But, like, this deep into your career, what's kind of like your goal for the next two, three years, you know? Man, shit. Another album coming. Yeah. For shit show. I'm going to say, like, around... 2023. Okay. Between February and like April. New album coming, shit. More Maxo. Probably more music, more than ever. Yeah. Like, right now, I'm in that mode, like, I'm comfortable where I'm at. I ain't here chasing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in no competition with nobody but Maxo. Yeah. No, I agree. More music. But I mean, you're also like, you know, you have like a family now. I'm just curious, do you, is your goal now that you want to split your time between your kids and music? Are you trying to go like full out with the music, spend all the time with that? I or? do both. Like yeah. I got a studio in my house and my daughter be with me. While you're recording? Like, yeah, I wake, she wake me up, literally. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Change her diapers. Like mm. when her mama sleeping or something like that, I got her. Yeah. Take my time. Like it's part of my life. I just schedule everything. I make time for everything. Yeah. But hey, bro, I appreciate you. I know you got a, you have like a, a show like really soon, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I go in a little bit. All right, I so think if I miss it, it's y'all fault. Okay, I'm so sorry, bro. I like honestly, I feel so bad, and like you have to walk up all these steps. But... You didn't feel bad. I got your interviews going down. <laughs> yes. you feel me? All right. He said what I was thinking. But hey, bro, I appreciate you. Appreciate Kids it. take over. Maxo Cream. Yo, guys, thanks for watching that Maxo Cream interview. Couple things I just want to say about that. Um, so for one, uh, I know we've been pretty inconsistent in posting. I just hope you guys know that there is like real personal things that go on behind uh the the content you know like i have my own life and uh we do have a big year plan like for kto like don't get that that twisted like new shows more interviews always taking suggestions from you guys Two, i know there was like some wind in this interview man like that rooftop was just such a dope location to do it i had to do it did not know it'd be that windy but tried to you know do the best we could and then third thing what was the third thing again the hell was the third? all right i remember the third thing now and it's that dude i have to stop saying i'm curious i say that so often and i'm editing the video and i'm i'm looking at it, i'm like dude that's just like in, in engraved into my vocabulary i got i gotta chill with that i'm gonna stop anyways appreciate you guys thanks for watching and i'm gonna catch you we'll go like the video first and then yeah i'm gonna catch you next next time